how should we approach the Quran study circles? I think with a lot of hesitation and deliberation. I think it's important to do tadabbar of the Quran. And I think um, there are some good commentaries now in English out there. For people that don't know Arabic, I think it is good to read the Quran in, uh, in English. Um, but you have to understand, you, you don't get fiqh from Quran, you don't get legal rulings from Quran, but you could, there's a lot of stories in the Quran that you can benefit from. There's, uh, there are a lot of uh, things that... Um, and it's good to know the Quran. I mean, one of the things about, if you take a devout Christian, a devout Christian knows Genesis. Like they'll tell you, you know, Genesis begins here, it goes there. That They'll give you the thematic aspects of Genesis. They'll know some of the wisdoms or stories. There. If you ask a Muslim, what's Baqarah about? A lot, most Muslims don't know what Baqarah is about, but Baqarah definitely has themes. And those themes are discernible. And, and so studying the Quran to, to, to know the book, you're going to, inshallah, be reading it your whole life. So it's definitely worth knowing. It's worth knowing the stories in the Quran. Uh, and there are good books now. A lot of these books have been, uh, they're accessible. You have to be careful. Pre-modern tafsirs are problematic. Um, not everything that's in tafsir is valid. And... So that's, that's an important aspect of it. And it's good to have, you, you need generally somebody, a student of knowledge, uh, to, to be a, um, a study leader or something like that. Because um, what, what, all sects go astray because of misinterpreting the Quran and the Hadith, all of them. There's no sect in, in the history of Islam that didn't go astray uh, for any other reason. It's always... Uh, uh, idiosyncratic uh, views on the Quran and the, and the people that the mainstream, the people of the plumb line uh, of Islam are the people that stayed within the broad based interpretive hermeneutic of Islam there's, there's a there's a usul there's usul al logha there's usul al fiqh there's usul al deen each one of these are interpretive um Tools that are binding upon the people of interpretation. You can't, you can't go outside of them. You cannot, like Shahrur, you know, this uh, man who d just really, really very strange ideas about Quran, but the idea that you, you, you free the language from the seventh century, I mean, that's completely insane. And a lot of these debates. Uh, are very similar to what you ha find in constitutional debates in America, you know, intentionalists, originalists, living constitutionalists. They're very similar I ideas. The problems of uh, interpretation are always going to be there. But, but by consensus, Quran can only mean what the Arabic language of the 7th century allows it to mean. It cannot mean linguistically Spiritual meanings are endless. Though that's a different thing, and, and we'll talk about that in here because he goes into that about isharat and things. The spiritual meanings of the Quran will go on forever, but the linguistic possibilities of those words are limited. For us, in terms of what Allah knows, uh, that's another thing. But for us, we have dictionaries that you can't change. They're fixed. al ain. You know, it's fixed. Lisan al-Arab, Zabidi. These are the great dictionaries of the Muslims. And the, the words mean what they mean. And you can't change those meanings.